with family and friends. I'm Pastor Shante Buckley, and I'm so glad that you all have tuned in tonight for our special broadcast. The whole idea is for us to focus on this area that affects all of us, which is our finances, regardless of how old we are, regardless of what our, our earnings might be, or what job we have, or what cultural background we come from. Money impacts all of us. But what we know is this truth, it is a gift from God. And how we use it, how we understand it, will impact how we are effective in this kingdom called God's kingdom and in the world around us. So tonight I'm joined by some of our lifters, Jen and her husband, Jesse, and they are professional money managers. They are licensed, Jen's a licensed financial broker and her husband Jesse is a licensed realtor and he's licensed in other entities as well. And we've had a lot of conversations over the past month or so about this particular topic. And how is it that money can really be a tool for us as believers in the Christian faith? I get it, many of us have been wounded, many of us tune out whenever we start talking about money in the church. But tonight, I hope that you can get a different perspective about it in order that you can grow in your relationship with God, your relationship with others, and even perhaps discover some new things about yourself in this particular area. As we begin, why godly generosity? Why do you think that that's important for believers? I think that's super important because as we are good godly stewards of you know the blessings and the things that God has given us and including spending less right mm -hmm. that allows us to use his resources in a better way to do his kingdom work mm -hmm. you know like you always say where his hands his feet and his heart yeah. right out in the community and so for us being able to um, look at things the way that he would want us to look at them mm -hmm. right coming from him um, him blessing us so that we can be a blessing to others right and so godly generosity starts with it is a biblical thing. This is not something we're just throwing words together and talking about, right? We're talking about something that really does affect our spiritual relationships with God. And the scripture speaks to our resources and money. So Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. So he always wants to see, you know, what your intentions are, what, right. you know, comes from your heart. Why are you choosing to do the things that you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that's with your time or your money or mm -hmm. the people that you love and care about, right? right? All of those things should stem from him right. and what he wants for us. One of the reasons why I thought it would be cool for us to talk about this in this way is because unfortunately the Christian church, um, especially in North America, we've kind of really done a bad job in some respects of how we talk about money in church, right? So a lot of our viewers are people who have either been disenchanted because of what they've been told about money in church, or they've been confused or led astray, or they've just been wounded, right? Mm -hmm. So we really want to help to give people a clearer understanding about why money is even relevant in our relationship with God. So why do you think that it's important to talk about this? I think it's really important because money is a gift from God and, and a tool too as well. So we're stewards of his money. It belongs to him already. Yeah. So we're just receiving it. So we're just giving back what's already his. Right. In terms of how we use it. Correct. Right. So where do you spend your money? That's one of the questions we've talked about a lot lately. You don't have to answer that right now to us. But... That's a question that we did talk about. What what do we spend our money on, right? So as financial planners and as people who work with people all the time, couples and singles and all various walks of life, I'm sure you have to ask that question. Mm -hmm. How can spending less help us and help others? Mm -hmm. Because that's the goal. Yes. It's not just to make you miserable where you never spend your money, you never have anything fun, you never do anything fun, you never buy anything that you really enjoy or love, but it is also how do we do those things as well as being able to help others. And then where does our money go? I think I was when I was about 25 and I had my first real job out of graduate school, I was like, where, where did it go? Like my first. A lot of people ask us that. A lot of people ask you that. And how can we use God's resources and blessings wisely and generously? So obviously we on Sundays have the opportunity to do so in church when we have our offering time. And you can do that online at any point because we believe that our gifts together helps lift yes. to carry out God's mission. But why are people having so many um, 
financial challenges, even Christians? That was a question that I wanted to know. Yeah. What are y'all's thoughts? Well, I think we think is that people don't have a financial coach, number one, to begin with. They don't know where to go for the resources. Mm. Like it's, where do I start? Where do I begin? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is having a financial game plan. So mm -hmm. having a financial game plan is like having a financial GPS. When you put in directions from your house to go to church, you know where to go. And a lot of people don't have that financial GPS. Okay, so like what's next? Exactly, what's the next step? What's you next turn step? right, you turn left, this yeah. is what you gotta do. Okay. Uh, and then the third one would be get a financial education because one of the oh, important things is about getting a financial education because you want to get an education of what you're going to absorb so then that way you can implement and apply to what you have to do for your plan. Right. And I think that that really is very helpful, particularly for people who perhaps wasn't, weren't raised in mm -hmm. uh, family systems where money either wasn't a conversation or there was never any education given uh, regarding money or how to mm -hmm. earn it, spend it, invest it, save it, or any coaching or anything like that. So those are really great points. And when we have these in place, the result, it can produce some serious changes in our lives, right? It definitely, definitely can, yeah. Right. So this is, this is not just for the ultra wealthy. That's not who we're talking to no. and about right now. Yeah. We're talking about everyday people, which is the majority of our Lyft community. Um, we have a wide variety of people there from all walks of life because yeah. that's the blessing that God has brought through Lyft. But even though we have that, we still want to make sure that we're doing our best job in how we can enhance and equip people with the right tools mm -hmm. yeah. to help them in their lives. So how do you you get started right what's mm -hmm. what's the step to get going so one of the steps that we would always recommend is building a, a household so when you start building a house you put the foundation put the walls up and you start putting the roof and everything else so one of the things to, to protect it would be life insurance life insurance is number one key to protect in case of a loss of an income so if this is a financial house that you're building mm -hmm. the foundation you're suggesting needs to be something that's firm and strong correct mm -hmm. If you are removed out of the picture, the house can still stand. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Perfect. And so what is that called? Uh, life insurance. Protect okay. your income with life insurance. Okay. Protect yep. your income with life insurance. Mm -hmm. And why was that important to you? Jesse also has a book. I'll talk about that later. But <laughs> you have a story, right? You have a, a, you can, you've come from two various different cultural backgrounds? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so was life insurance something that was spoke about or? So <laughs> in our culture, in the Hispanic culture, we don't believe in life insurance. It's, it's when a someone, thing. It, it is a thing, <laughs> uh -huh. but we don't believe in it. Okay. You know, so it's like, okay, grandpa passes away, grandpa passes away. Um, what do we do? Let's just pass the bucket around. Let's see how much we can collect. Let's put a 20, let's put a 100. So we can bury grandpa. Exactly. Okay. But life insurance does what? Different? Life insurance, well, what it'll do is in the event if someone would pass, like your spouse or someone, your loved ones, it would replace that income coming in. Like instead of like when a paycheck you're getting in every single month, mm -hmm. it replaces that income. And it also allows you the resources to have whatever type of burial or whatever type of yes. service you Correct. would like for that loved one um, who has lived a life here on this earth, right? right. So it's not, um, it's not a unreasonable thought mm -hmm. to invest in getting something that you pay monthly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're paying it monthly, but it will be helpful in the long run. Yes, yes correct. Exactly. Right, okay. And the, you know, the insurance companies take a huge risk, right, giving you a large sum of money where your premium monthly or quarterly or mm -hmm. annually, however they pay it, is a lot smaller, mm -hmm. right, for them to be able to create that estate for their family, leave a right. legacy for them, you know, right. and again, replace their income right. to however much they might need. So we're talking to all the people who got abuelas <clears throat> and, 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 and grandpas <laughs> and, you know, from whatever culture you're, you're from, if your family is not inherently wealthy or rich, and if that mm -hmm. person is no longer in the picture, can the home still stand? Mm -hmm. Can your financial being still exist? even with that person no longer being there. So what would be the next layer to this home? So the second layer after that would be budget and emer emergency fund. Like Ooh, a, budget. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tune out yet. <laughs> stick, stick with us. Go ahead. Talk about that, Jessica. So an emergency fund, like for example, if your car breaks down, or you have to replace an air, air conditioning, you have to go somewhere to have liquid funds where you're able to pull that out. Mm -hmm. So if your AC breaks out or when your transmission goes out, that's in a huge expense. That could cost you five to $10,000. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get that money? Mm -hmm. It's good to have an emergency fund and a savings account so you can pull that money out liquid mm -hmm. and pay what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And so what are most people's apprehensions about having it? If people 
people are living just paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about an emergency fund, but mm -hmm. they got to worry about how they're going to pay just the regular bill next month. Right. How is this even possible? So a budget would be helpful to make that possible? Yes, yeah, so a budget. So putting away at least starting with $25 a month or $50 a month, something that you can <laughs> save because we all go to Starbucks. We love Starbucks. We spend that five, ten dollars and we just swipe it or we tap it. But yeah. what happens if you didn't go to Starbucks today? Or what happens if you just do five times five and that's twenty-five? And then you just didn't go to Starbucks in those twenty-five days, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And just you reward yourself when you need to go. So okay. that way you can start you can start setting up a budget, at least $25 a month. Okay, so a budget is not an unrealistic or some pie in the sky tool. It is something that every person, regardless of what level of income you're you're in, it can be helpful for you because it allows you to see what you have, what you're bringing in, mm -hmm. and where your money's going. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So what would be the next layer of of the house for people. So the next layer would be accelerate paying off debt. That would be the next layer because what you want to do is you don't want to continue paying off your credit card, revolving credit card over and over again. You want to pay off the bigger debt so you can snowball that down to the smaller debt. So then that way you're not your paycheck is not going out the window every single every single Friday or every other Friday. Right. So for those of us who have learned about debt, mm -hmm. who are old enough to know what it is, who have because there are there's some forms of good debt, right? Mm -hmm. In America, yeah. you actually do need credit, yes. right? But how you allow that credit to work for you mm -hmm. or not work for you can cause this ripple effect yes. called debt, bad debt that mm -hmm. can really harm your financial yeah. well-being, Definitely. right? Correct. And so <laughs> what you're saying is if credit cards is one of the areas where you have the greatest amount of debt, your suggestion is to do what again? paying off the bigger debt and then working your way down. So when you pay off the big debt and you're done with that debt, grab that same monthly income that you're doing, take it down to your next credit card, your mm -hmm. second highest one, pay that one off, grab that same monthly payment, go down to the third one, all the way down to the bottom so that we can knock off the debt. We okay. call that the snowball effect. The snowball effect. So Jen, you're building this financial house with your husband. What's the next layer? Uh, retirement would be the next layer. So. Retirement. Yep. I'm talking to two people that Save have to be under yeah. the age of 40 years old. You got a long time to work, and I'm certain that some, many of our viewers do as well. But this is still an important topic, right? Yes. Because we do live in a time and in an age where Social Security may not be available for many of mm -hmm. you all when you get to the certain age where you can receive Social yeah. Security. So how will you live having a retirement plan um, and knowing what it is and paying into it yep. or having some idea of the investment for it is important, yes, right? Okay, important. so talk about that, Jen. And so, you know, like Pastor Shante said, a lot of younger people <laughs> might not think about those things a lot, right? A lot of times we get people who come to us and they're like nearing retirement. That's mm -hmm. when they start thinking about it, but it might be too late then. They might not be able to meet their financial independence number, right? Okay. The money that they're going to need to live off of, right? So they don't have to work forever till they die, right? right? We don't want to work forever, right? right. Um, and so being able to start saving now while you're younger allows you to take advantage of compound interest and time. You have right. time on your side, right? So if you work someplace that has some sort of retirement plan, should people get become a part of it? Yeah, so there's different things that we look at there, you know, depending on what their benefits are and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Obviously, if your employer, you know, can max um, maximize your contribution, anything like that, you know, those are important things because that's free money to you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they could match that. Um, but there are things you can do as well outside of that if you have, you know, like additional IRA to say. Or yep, anything exactly, else. like okay. a Roth IRA and all of those things. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the next one would be college savings. College okay. savings is super important to have. Because a lot of us do have kids, and we want to start planning for them for their colleges. Colleges right. are getting more and more expensive nowadays. Yes, Lord. And financial aid could only give you so much support, mm -hmm. so you need to start creating a, a college plan. The moment you know that you're, gonna, you're planning to have kids, or you're going to have a kid, start planning for that college savings immediately. And if your child says, I don't want to go to college, or I don't feel called to go to college yet, there are other things you can do with that yes. fund. Yes, you can. Or ways to use it for their benefit. That's right. For yeah. their business. If they want to launch a business, they could also use that too. If they want to launch something else, you know, whatever their passion is, if they want to go buy art with it, that's totally well, up no, to them. Well, no, you're not using my college. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so yes, there's a lot of different minor accounts. You know, some mm -hmm. are geared specifically towards, you know, education and, mm -hmm. you know, tuition. There are some that will even help pay for like K through 12 or, okay. you know, college, right? And so um, it's never too early to start teaching our kiddos about how to save, 
yep. you know, wh what they spend their money on and how to use money. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's actually something that we um, see a lot of parents ask to, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of, and we show them, you know, if you were to save for your baby, right? Mm -hmm. Like starting now, mm -hmm. what would that mean? Like, what would that look like for right. them, right? Once they're 18 or right. even older. And then if you do put those um, things in place and start teaching them those values and having a good relationship with money, right? right. Or God's resources. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can grow and, and adapt those things, right? As they right. get older and right. all that stuff. So. Right. I think that's really helpful. And so that would be the top layer then of the house. What kind of goals and dreams <laughs> yeah, you have. That's right. It's one thing to have them, but it's another thing to get the GPS in place to see mm -hmm. how do we get there. Correct. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the top of the house right is being able to understand how will you fund your hopes and your dreams exactly. where you're not just paying off debt all your life <laughs> yep. and you're the not just stuff. yeah well, you're right where you can do some of the fun stuff so I, I i love that we in our conversation we had this this discussion about you know how fluid money can be um and there are going to be times when things happen right so what happens in those times when stuff comes up? Mm -hmm. How do you still manage your life even when it feels really hard financially? So obviously, like Jesse mentioned, you know, putting those things in place, getting a financial coach, you know, getting advice, um, having your financial house in place, right? Mm -hmm. Those things are important for when those things come up. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, right, it might Right. You might not have been able to do that yet, right? right? So you might be like, what do I do now? Right, right. <laughs> um, and we have to kind of look at where people are, mm -hmm. you know, take a step back and have them see all those things that we just talked about, all those mm -hmm. questions you asked, where's their money going? What can they do to save? Mm -hmm. You know, all of that stuff in their budget. Um, and then show them where they could be mm -hmm. and then how to get there. Because right. there's some things you just cannot control. Yes, there like, are, definitely. Like what, what, what are some of those things? Some of those things you cannot control include the future of social security. Right. Right. Your I mean, employer. We can't control Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. right. You mentioned that earlier. We don't even know who's going to be there right? Right. Like, for us later. Um, your employer, mm -hmm. right? You know, what if you get laid off? Right. right. What if you get furloughed? What if they cut your income or something? Right. Um, we definitely can't control taxes, right? No. We have no control. Mm -hmm. No control. Um, everybody's feeling, you know, the effects of inflation now, right? Yeah. With the rising costs of everything. Of milk um, and eggs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. for the most basic things, right? Yeah. Um, and or even the risk of a single investment, you know, a lot of things are out there now where people are like, oh, I need to put all my money into this place or, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. And unfortunately, sometimes that means they lose money. Like um, FTX? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of people even have been really scared about, you know, Silicon Valley Bank. Like, yeah. recently, you know. Right. Um, but there are some yeah. things we can control. We can't yes. live in fear no. of the things that we have no control over. Definitely but we not. do have the ability to plan and to do some yes. things that we can control that's within our means. Right. So what would those things be more of what we've talked about? You know, we can control saving for retirement, mm -hmm. other sources of income, ways to reduce your taxes, uh, maximizing whatever those savings are that you currently have, saving more mm -hmm. when you can, right? Mm -hmm. After you pay off all your debt or anything right. like that. And then having a diversity of investment choices, right? Right. What do they always say? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. One basket. Right? Yeah, that's right. Don't put them all in one basket. <laughs> so that's a great lead in to what are the baskets that yep. people should have? Jesse, what are the baskets <laughs> in your life as a person who is an earner, who's bringing in revenue into your home? Mm -hmm. What do the baskets look like? What, yep. what would you call them? So you need three accounts that is what you need. Number one is having an emergency fund. You gotta have an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Emergency fund for whatever comes up, you need, like I, like I mentioned earlier, you gotta have some liquid savings on the side to pull out. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is having a short-term savings account too okay. as well at the bank or anywhere else, right? Like a grant. But like not a, under the mattress. Not under <laughs> the mattress, no. Okay, got it. <laughs> the third one would be a long-term savings and investment account too as well. Okay. So these accounts are super duper important to have. And so then that way you're not having just one account, like Jennifer said, all pull all my eggs in one basket. Let me just pull out from my 401k. That's mm -hmm. what you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what you don't want to do. And so being able to access traditional banks or credit unions is probably more advisable than storing your money under the bed or in a shoebox or wherever else, <laughs> right? Because it, it should be able to grow some level of interest if it's a savings account yeah. um, or money market accounts or whatever. And even having a checking account is helpful in that you don't have to pay a huge fee if you need to just even go get a check cash. Mm -hmm. We know there are places that exist in yeah. our communities that 
they operate for solely that yes, purpose. That's true. And that can become expensive. Yes. yes. In Definitely. the long run, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. But people do also, you know, have to take advantage of that in, you know, the other savings accounts that they do have, whether it isn't like investments like mutual funds or something like that, that's right. going to help their money grow better than it would at the bank. Because a lot of people right now are right. losing because of inflation. Like, right. I understand Even that. just that. So, right. that so talking to someone too. about this, yep. um, because money does matter to us. It doesn't it does. just matter to pay the bills. It matters in that it's been a gift to you. So it's yep. a tool to you. So how you use it is really really important, yeah, right? Definitely. So we talked earlier about a budget. And again, don't tune out. I know everybody's <laughs> eyes glaze over. But I just continue to go back to when I'm meeting with couples before they get married. Because yeah. inevitably, after they are married and things start falling apart, and then they come to me individually at that point, it, it, when it's about money, where it is and how it went, is usually where the breakdown happens mm -hmm. because generally two people you have one person's a saver one's a spender maybe you meet somebody who's both astute about money like the two of you are but that's generally not everybody's case right. so why is a budget helpful like this is an example of a budget right mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. um, and so Jesse and I were very blessed <laughs> that we thought the same you know when you were, when you got together yeah when we got together okay. you know we never really fight about money at all so oh, okay. um, <laughs> But a lot of people do. Just they like fight about other stuff. Yeah. Okay, go, go ahead. <laughs> Who ate the last cheese pizza? But, okay. you know, we, don't, we don't remember that. <laughs> but that is, it's very, very common, right, for people to argue about that, especially when they don't see eye to eye, when they're not on the same page. Um, so, you know, sitting down together and actually looking at their budget and, and where those things are going, you know. And agreeing together. Yes, exactly. Agreeing uh -huh. together and actually laying out those things and seeing it. And, and uh, you know, this one that we do, they're mm -hmm. able to see based on their monthly income mm -hmm. after they put all those things at their expenses, mm -hmm. you know, and they can see if they have a shortfall right, right. or a surplus. Right. Um, maybe there are things that they can work on there. Right. right. Um, but doing it together right. <laughs> is, is the important thing and communicating that. Right. And then for those of us who are single and still ready to mingle, yeah. <laughs> um, you, it's still important to have a budget, yes, right? Because important. it helps you to be accountable to yourself yes. even. Or if you're working with a financial planner or someone else, you can actually see what you can see your life on paper, exactly. right? You can see your financial resources on paper. So yeah. that's really helpful to know. If we're talking about spending less in order that we can uh, have more of a relationship or opportunities to, to do what God has called us to do on earth, it's helpful to have a clear picture yes. of what you have and what you don't have, right? What are some other practical tips that you guys could, or you think might be helpful to give the congregation on um, how to reduce spending. We This is a, a sheet that we have looked at, but we're gonna post all of this on our website so mm -hmm. you can ac access these documents at your leisure. But Jesse, what are just a few of these tips that you thought were helpful? So some of the tips that I thought that were really helpful was uh, plan for your meals and also make a grocery list. Mm -hmm. um, and stick don't to go it. to the grocery store, <laughs> right? So don't go hungry without a list, because you will leave Target with everything. That's right. <laughs> well, and sometimes when you go to the wrong aisle, you start putting in the right. ice cream and everything right. else that doesn't belong on the list. So. Shop the perimeters. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, bring your own snacks to movies. This also helps. What? To be <laughs> Illegal. <laughs> Scratch that button. I know. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> but what's well, another way to conserve your resources? Uh, buy a vehicle instead of a new one. This is really helpful because if you buy a used vehicle, right, it's super, it's a lot more cost effective than buying a new vehicle. With new vehicles nowadays, with the cost of inflation and taxes and everything going higher, you're going to save a lot more money with a used vehicle. A pre-owned vehicle, pre-loved, right? <laughs> so That's one right. that the, they're all going to depreciate in value, but you've knocked out some of the depreciation by buying one that's already yeah. pre-owned. That's pre-owned. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I love that. And is there anything else you think would be helpful to give people as a tip? Uh, another one I would say is set up a budget and stick to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we talked about budget. That's the name of the game. If you stick to a budget, if you set a goal, you're most likely going to hit that goal. But yeah. you have to have a goal in place mm -hmm. in order to hit it. Or like we always say in the wor in our world is you plan to succeed or you plan to fail. Yeah. So have a budget and stick to it and plan to succeed. to succeed, plan to succeed. Do you guys think that the use of digital money all the time or our debit cards um, or being able to pay for things with Apple Pay or just everything is so electronic that perhaps children or our teenagers really 
might have a harder time understanding budgets and money because it's it becomes this entity that they never really see. Yeah. Yeah. They don't really touch it. It's all numbers. So it's just, it's so elusive. Mm -hmm. So how can we help people who are in that space where, hey, let me just pull out the debit card. <laughs> but you really don't, you, you know, you don't have a way to keep track of that. Right. So it's important to do yes, that, right? Yes, no, it is. And we've noticed, you know, the difference with that. Like with our older clients, obviously, you know, they were used to touching their money and they like that still, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I need to see it and feel it and like mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and then younger people are like, yep, swipe here, swipe there. Mm -hmm. like, tap here. I'm tap here, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think for them, because they use a lot of apps or they, you know, mm -hmm. are used to going online and mm -hmm. like looking at their stuff, you know, them seeing that, right? Because they can see the change in the numbers. Like, right, right, right. You know, they can track it. But there's a lot of people that don't, you right. know? Right. Like, they get their paycheck and they don't even know how much their paycheck was. Like, right, right, <laughs> they're right. They're just like, I know it's today's payday. Because like, it automatically yeah, got exactly. deposited and then bills start <laughs> right, coming out exactly. before you know it. Yeah. Right. So it's important to even, whether you have an app that you use or you yep. need one, to find something that you can track, track or see yep. where your spending exactly. is and what you have. Right. Right. Lastly, the question that I've gotten a lot, because a lot of our congregants are people who are young like yourselves or who are in the childbearing point of life and they want to have a family or they want to start a family. And many of them want to have a family, but perhaps they have to use uh, non-traditional measures to make that possible. Right. So whether they're an individual or whether they're a couple, we all know that um, Children are expensive. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's expensive to have a baby the traditional way and the non-traditional way. Mm -hmm. But particularly if you're going to adopt or you're going to do um, some other sort of in vitro or other procedures, is it impossible? Or how should one plan for that, even though um, it's not, it doesn't exist right now? It's something that they hope to have. Nothing is impossible, right? right. We've got it. <laughs> but, right. um, but yeah, you know, going back to looking at where they are mm -hmm. and then remember that financial house that we took a look at earlier, having those other goals and dreams. And that's something that we look at, you know, in someone's right. financial needs analysis, right? right? How much are they going to need? When are they going to need it by? Mm -hmm. You know, and they can actually see, hey, this is how much I need to save a month to get to that goal. So right. it is possible. Right. Whatever exactly. that may be. It is possible. So one of the things I loved about talking with y'all today is that everything that you've said is so helpful because it really can help to alleviate a lot of the stress and a lot of the pressure that most of us feel when we think about money. Yeah. And especially when we think about our own money and our resources. The reality is people, you know, are in debt and people yeah. do struggle from paycheck to paycheck and they can't figure it out. But our prayer and our hope is that you can start somewhere, that you will just at least start with the baby step. Yeah. Just start today at at least getting your head out the sand, if that's where it's been, to at least look at what you have, what God has blessed you with and how you should move forward. Because you can do it. God is with you. I want to leave Jesse and Jennifer's information up on the screen because I am not an expert in finances. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> but they are. And so if you have more questions or specific uh, questions that you'd like to address to them, please feel free to reach out to them. Again, their training, their skills, it's not a direct reflection of Live Community Church. It is their training and their skills, but we believe that they could be a great help to many people in the world because they really believe that God has blessed them in order that they might bless others. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. And we love you, God loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it. So stay lifted.